Very hard. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'm going to read our board's purpose um, and then also direct the board and our audience um, to our working agreements, our mission vision, and our core values, which guide all of our actions, words, and deeds. So the board will govern lawfully with an emphasis on outward vision rather than internal preoccupation, diversity of viewpoints, and sufficient understanding of issues, strategic leadership more than administrative detail, clear, clear distinction of board and chief executive roles, collective rather than individual decisions, future rather than past or present, and proactivity rather than reactivity. Take just again 30 seconds, 60 if you need, for the board agreements and condition and core values to ground ourselves in our work. There's any comments on any of those? I'll take that now. Who has her time? Let's do a roll call. Johnson here. Moen here. Sharon here. Smith here. Vidovich here. Can I get a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Second. Second. Any votes? Okay. Johnson aye. Moen aye. Sharon aye. Smith. Aye. Bitovich? Aye. Recognitions, school board recognition month. Usually we're recognizing others. And so we have cake to recognize <laughs> the board. We just want to thank you all for all of you, all of the work you do as in your in your roles and the extra meetings and extra time and the care for the community. It's clear that we have a, a board that cares about moving forward and also taking care of. Of our students and staff and families. So thank you to uh, to just all that you do. It's a pleasure to work alongside you. I don't know if anyone else would like to share anything with the board. It's an amazingly thankless task, and it we are very honored always to have you guys doing this work for on our behalf. You know how many hours it is. And I know speaking for with my fellow administrators, we, we deeply appreciate each each and every single one of you. Thank you for everything you do. It means a lot. We take tips. <laughs> I work for what he said. I work for what he said. Let's make sure. Do you want to go ahead and have the cake? Oh, yeah, never mind. Thank you for our audience members. Let's have the cake now. Let's get that going. Yep. I'll cut here. I can cut it while you use this. Thank you. Do we have any public comment this evening? Um, we do not. I will okay. check one more time. No, we do not have public comment. Then I will not read the public comment. Um, jumping into our regular minute of uh, consent agenda. So can I get a motion to approve the consent agenda? And would we approve the consent agenda? Can I get a second? Second. Can I get a vote? We have one comment. Mm -hmm. comment. About the consent agenda, about the uh, person, I would just like to recognize Nick Nunley. It's a big loss that we have. He is, I personally know how much he helped my granddaughter. He reaches out and he's been a 
I think an asset to all these athletes and managing the opportunity they lost. So wishing him the best. I know yeah. Jack said to Yeah, I, I can't really sure. second that because that's probably not official, much. but but Nick was awesome. He uh, went above and beyond with uh, with my daughter Nicole and uh, he is a significant asset to open this. He moved he's going to a to a cool job, but that doesn't lessen our loss. Yeah, okay. thank you very much. Agreed. He uh, certainly, as I mentioned, assisted Nicholas with Nicholas, and yeah. then he had a confession that was pretty severe. And mom probably would have minimized it because that's the kind of mom I am. <laughs> um, and uh, Nick showed the appropriate care. <laughs> He's, He's always welcome here in Manitou. Yeah, so. exactly, exactly. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, um, appreciate that. All right. So is it a week vote? Um, Johnson. Aye. Moen. Aye. Sharon? Aye. Smith? Aye. Benovich? Aye. And so we have Andrew Finnity from, did I pronounce that correctly, Andrew? Yes. I just know you as Andrew <laughs> from the UPass BOCES. Uh, Marcy Palmer, our executive director of the BOCES, is in California with the birth of her grandson. Mm -hmm. um, she seems like she timed it well. I know she's <laughs> <laughs> like, should she go? Should she not go? Her daughter was being induced. So sorry, Marcy, if that was too much info, but we're really happy for her and congratulate her. And Andrew is new to the UPass Bosies this year. I am. And this is a great opportunity for him to present in front of a friendly, welcoming board. Absolutely. <laughs> I get that feeling initially, and I appreciate it. It's great to be here with everyone. So what I'm gonna to do today is just go over kind of what we do as a BOCES, um, highlighting a few selected areas in particular. And I'm kind of a walker when I present, so I apologize if I like pace back and forth or right. Okay, okay, perfect. So this is just highlighting things. Thank you so much. Six feet. Yeah, I was gonna say, see how he's modified the physical environment for you. I, and that makes me you advocated for yourself. Yes. I like to pull blocks in. So really, I just want to highlight a couple of things within the administrative unit. This means a school, a school district that is providing educational services to exceptional children, and that is responsible for local administration of these roles. So some of these roles that an AU has, an administrative unit has, and these are not exhaustive. Financial commitments, there's procedure for evaluating programs, there's accountability for state and federal funds, AUs have to have at least a half time special ed director. They have to have a child find coordinator. Uh, there's reporting requirements both federally and through the state. And then adherence to licensing requirements for special education teachers and service providers. So on within the BOCES, we have 19 staff members. Marcy started this 18 years ago with two, and now we have 19. Um, I'm not going to read all of this list to you, um, we have, but we have a couple of things that I want to be very clear with. There's a lot of acronyms in education, as we're all familiar with. TBI means teacher of visually impaired. A BCBA is somebody who specializes in behavioral modifications, in particular, and specifically with students with autism. A CODA, as you see the point eight CODA, that is a certified occupational therapy assistant. We have five SLPs and an SLP is a speech and language pathologist. And we have one SLPA, which is a speech and language pathology assistant. We have one transition coordinator and our coordination or our, our transition program is fantastic at Woodland Park. It, you might want to explain what a transition program is. So it's it's going from um, really looking at a student who is more work oriented and getting them ready for the world. And so what we do is for a transition coordinator, their responsibilities are providing real tangible um, experiences within the community. Um, this being the transition coordinator in our transition program is all about recycling. So they they house in uh, Woodland Park Middle School, and they have an exceptional program. I did a couple observations there this semester, and I've learned a lot about it. So they have community programs in which people recycle uh, material. The students will um, deconstruct the material, sort them, and then the recycling companies will come up and actually bring the recycling material to Colorado Springs for it to be processed. 
there's three there's three students currently in the transition program right now and then we have one transition para and the swap which is school to work alliance program serves all three districts but they're not our employees so let's kind of break down the 19 staff members so services we have 19 full and part-time BOC service providers District-wide, as a district, you have 10 special education teachers, three special service providers, and 21 paraprofessionals, as well as four gifted teachers, and it's full and part-time. So this is when I start to bore people because I'm very passionate about it. But this is kind of a breakdown of fake which means free appropriate public education. And when I think about fate, I like to, to pose as kind of like a mathematical equation. We have substantive appropriateness plus procedural requirements will equal fate. So in order to have fate with free appropriate public education, we have that substance piece, which is really the meat and potatoes of the driving force behind IEPs. That's like the services, that's the goals, that's the accommodations. Those are the tangible management measurements in which we adhere to and we check ourselves with data to make sure we're being effect, as effective as possible. And then we have the procedural requirements. The procedural requirements, so as an administrative unit, we are rated as per the state with something called RDA, which is called result, which is based on results driven accountability. So within the results driven accountability, which is broken upon the high quality instruction and the compliance, we have what is administered to all school districts for state reporting. Then they house that data and they provide a, a determination letter. Now the determination letter consists of both, and this is where I'm going on, the administrative unit determinations. This looks at 17 indicators, both from compliance and results. So the compliance piece looks at things such as suspensions, and expulsions, disproportionality, timely evaluations, part C to part B, which means part C to part B transitions. Part B is from three years old to 21, part C is before. Secondary transitions, et cetera. So that's the compliance aspects. Then results is the graduation rates, the dropout rate, rates, the state assessments. They really take into consideration what we call LRE, which is the least restrictive educational environment. They really want to see that 80% or above, right? In addition to LRE, we look at early childhood for results, the outcomes, parent involvement, and post school outcomes. So with high quality instruction, this is where we're looking at just the tangible measurements because each student needs to grow in light of their unique circumstances on appropriately ambitious goals. So as a BOCES unit, we try to look at, because we serve Manitou, of course, Cripple Creek and Woodland Park, we try to look at everyone's leverage points, everyone's action plans, and we try to make sense and we create our own leverage plans, plans based on what the existing districts are doing. And so this is kind of just a highlight of what we've been doing and what we're trying to aspire to accomplishing is strengthen specially designed instruction and academic and functional skills through a robust professional learning community model. This looks at, at the beginning of the school year, we had a training with all special education staff, and I think there was 56, if I'm not mistaken. Who attended this training? We did a needs assessment. Um, I think it was more than 89% of the people said, uh, teachers, said that they really want more support within social emotional learning. Because the implications from the ongoing COVID has really created a big chaotic situation where we have mental health being the precedence right now. So teachers really want more information, more curriculum around the social emotional learning as well as math and writing interventions. So in doing so, we look at the monthly special education meetings as a, as a platform and as a way 
to communicate evidence-based practices in, in coordination with the social emotional learning that is connected to the needs assessment. We strive to improve the intensive tier of support within each district's multi-tiered system of support for exceptional students. Our instructional consultant, who is, a, is an employee of Hill Springs, and Hill Springs is an evidence-based um, curriculum designed to meet the needs of the most significant learners who have difficulties. Um, she is a fantastic resource, very, very knowledgeable. So she comes out and she does training with Hill Rap, which is their reading curriculum. And then she has, there's a math curriculum too. So she does monthly coaching. She, she'll even actually do weekly coaching if anyone reaches out to her. Um, at Cripple Creek, there's, it's, it's a weekly basis that people are reaching out and she provides um, both in-person and remote instruction and support. As well as we really worked on the effective needs, which is our effective needs programs for students with either a, a serious or severe emotional disability or kids with um, that have OHI and ADHD being the primary factor who need a more restrictive environment, need more social emotional instruction. And so we support them through the effective needs programs, as well as the SSN consultants. And SSN means significant student needs. We strive to improve the monitoring of student progress within general education and individual goals. We do data shares in each building. We look at 80% of goals on target. So I just had, I just got off the, a call with Woodland Park. Um, we did our data share this evening. So what the teachers do is they break their, they break their IEP goals down into components. So we look at how many goals they have and the percentage of those goals that are on track to meeting progress, at least 80%. And right now we've, we've really had good results. And then we always want to support each district in strengthening best first instructional practices. Here's just the breakdown of the special education data as it, as it applies to Manitou. And actually, the 100 has changed. It's 101 as of today. Um, <laughs> and that one being right here, we have a new high school student. We just came in, so we've got 101 students on IEPs. And I'll just give you a minute to absorb the information. Sorry. Yes. So is that about 8% of our population? Yeah. Um, IEPs? Eight to, yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. And that counts not, so this is all students registered with Manitou rather than students that are traveling to another district. This is just this just these are our students that we own that right. These yes, but we have one from Cripple Creek as well, accessing the Harmony program, which is the effective needs program in Manitou. Now, good question: yes. Is that student count in any of our CMAS data? Do they count in our um, counts in the H A U matrix? I know, but does yeah. that count in any of our school specific data, or is that then att attributed back to Cripple Creek for like CMAS and stuff? Colleen saying yes. It does. Yeah. Okay. My data. Cripple Creek, Cripple Creek owns it. Right, because that's their okay. district of okay. residence. Okay, yeah, just double checking. I just know that it's a DAC. Right. <clears throat> but 8% is lower than the state it's average. Lower. Yeah, of 12, 12%. 12 mm -hmm. Yeah. And lower than Cripple Creek and Woodland Park. So, yes. Yes, ma'am, it is. Cripple and Creek's I, increased significantly over the last year. So. Yes. Our split that we do with the out of the BOCES used to be like a 60% Woodland Park, 30% Manitou, 10% Cripple Creek. That's since shifted a little bit. Like Cripple Creek was at 12%, but that's even higher this year. Like a, the yeah. distribution of everybody. <laughs> yeah. So two reasons for that generally is one is rerollment okay. practice. Second is identification through the MTSS process. So. And last year at this point, it was 121. So it gives a little bit of perspective as well. So that is interesting. Um, yeah. As in, were those students staffed out? Have they moved? Have they changed districts of residence? I think I'm just saying for us, that's a question. Yeah. You know, happen, right? I, would but, love, <laughs> I would love to do some research and answer that. I would, yeah. yeah. 
But I mean, I think those are always, you know, where did those students go? I don't celebrate our students with disabilities leaving us. No, either, nor should we. No. So here's the breakdown of the data. And we have students on IEP, students not on IEPs. We have gifted, accounted for, and we have not gifted. So what I would say is that I, in looking at this, I have a lot more questions than I do um, actual understanding of the data because I like to see it disaggregated to identify the elements contributing to the scores. I mean, of course, we have the contributing factor of the pandemic, right? And the fact that they were not tested last year. Um, we definitely see in the areas of math, we definitely see a huge, and I can tell you the exact scores. We have a 694 in 2019 to a 696 in 2021, increase of two. But you can see the state level. This is the state average. I apologize for not explaining that before. So that's the state average. Right. And then the percent above is the participation rates. So we've seen really a, a, a stagnant, and this is not atypical. This is just what's going on in terms of nationwide. And students on IEPs, really not showing a high level of advancement um, within state measurements. Um, so yeah, I would like to desire to get data to look really at, at adherence to the programs, program specificity, engagement, and then high quality instruction to really think about and conceptualize, and digest this information in a reasonable manner. We do see you know, the gifted and talented as well. The state and is us. And this is Manitou, correct? Not the Oh, yeah, yeah, this is Manitou. Right. This man. But oh, sorry. It would be interesting to see C Mass results this absolutely year, yeah. consistently in person. Or we've been in person, some of the consistency with the absences and attendance and covering classes is yeah. not what we wish. Like it wasn't last, it's not we're not reliving last year. Yeah, so that's that's a bonus. Yeah, it is a bonus. <clears throat> Absolutely. And then the last slide, I can speak to anything SR2 and above, but I was not here during the SR1. So I apologize. But if you have any other if you have questions about it, I can absolutely find out for you. Susie, I can. Yeah. Oh, there you go. There you go. I'm gonna say SR1 was a pretty minimal amount that first year. Yeah, right. I'm not going to arm wrestle anybody with that amount this year after so many things were needed. Yeah. And the answer to funding, we looked at technology, designee stipends. So this is stipending teachers who are their own designee for an IEP meeting um, or designee for others. So their stipend, depending on their different, it's like a hierarchy. We have a one, a two, and a three. A, a designee status of a three would mean they could go anywhere in the district, do initials, do evaluations. They can kind of be the oversight, the compliance checker, like I, I like to call it, um, regarding the IEP process. And then we did provide some incentivized pay to our BOCES staff um, this year. This is our first time in terms of my knowledge. Um, and now we have our ESSERS 3 funding coming up, which that means we have 59,000, is that correct? So that's mm -hmm. the biggest chunk of ESSERS 3 funding that we have. So that's exciting. And, and Marcy's working with superintendents to identify usage. So, and last one is questions. Questions, friends? Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much, Andrew. Thanks for letting me be here. I appreciate it. Yeah. Moving on to the board development, looking at the annual work plan, it looks like. Uh, governance policy 1.3 and 1.4. All about me. <laughs> Thoughts on this? Reflections? Well, just that. Um... Or 1.3.3 represents boards, outside parties, um, and that's in both state positions. Should we put something in there around 
working with district staff first in communications or? Mm. Well, I think, you know, it depends on what I mean. So, for example, when somebody emails the board directly, all of us, I generally am the one who responds. I think if you mean in situations of media, mm -hmm. right, um, I, I, you know, we, we certainly can. I don't know if we don't really have somebody designated per se, but I'm generally not going to be like, yes, I mean, and but that, but then it gets into person specific versus role specific. So if we wanted to, we could write something around, um, you know, collaboration with appropriate school individuals, or it could be just our executive officer and then superintendent, so the board and superintendent will collaborate to decide appropriate methods of communicating with the media. I don't know. I mean, however you want to. I mean, it's, it's not a problem. I mean, you haven't been. I mean, nobody, <laughs> nobody's been calling me. <laughs> I'm just saying that if, it, if you did have a different board, it's possible. Right, exactly. You can't have, it can't be person dependent. It has to be. Would, right. That's all that I'm saying. But. Is that something we would want to spend some time on in a work session or discuss now? Um, do we need a statement in there regarding communication from the board president that deals with the media, or is that covered anywhere else in policy? Well, I was wondering if it was covered somewhere else. It seems like it might be. I can't tell you where. <laughs> I feel like it is in Section K. Uh, let me pull that up. Yeah. Section K. There's a Section K. It's around all around community relations and. It talks about, I read it recently. I read it to the assistant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> assistant superintendent. You've seen it that way? <laughs> yeah. It says on um, policy KA-R, but communication between the Board of Education and the community. So if you want to. What is it? K-R? K-R. Yeah. Oh, Ah, each building's parent newsletter <laughs> shall. This one, I remember this. y'all didn't know that one. This one is very old, 2007 as well. So would this be though the appropriate place to have that because it has the community? Um, the, so so one point three point three though is a pretty specific. Uh, questions or things that the board president can speak to. It's basically announcing board stated positions and decisions interpretation areas delegated to the president. So it's not like you're going to go and give a public comment on anything. You know, well, not anything. I don't want to minimize the role. It, it limits it your will ability. be very limited. I'm yeah. not just going to go. Yeah. Do so, it I, so I don't know if, it, if I think it's. I think that seems like a, a narrow enough focus that. Those are guardrails that I think any board president can probably stay with them. Either. But on 1.3.7, we need to change director to superintendent. Perfect, yes. So it will make some change. So it shows that we are paying attention. Indeed. I think that's, that's three directors we've caught today. <laughs> when we, We're getting work done. When we find things that should have been, we just address them and it'll it'll come up as a at the bottom if you ever if it ever said when was this a, a change. So see at the bottom it says last month by Kindle. Mm -hmm. so like, if it's like a typo, just make and it's already been approved before. You just make those edits and then okay. thank you for doing that. Yeah, because it's in a lot of bad. We don't want to see all those. No, mm -hmm. GP 1.3.6 also has that. Um, so any thoughts on I've heard from Natalie, I've heard from Jack on any any changes to that 1.33 to include anything regarding speaking to the media. Is that any changing or nay? I would agree with nay. How strongly do you feel? 
I'm not very strong. Okay. Nobody's worried. I'm not worried. Okay. <laughs> Anything else with that one? Well, did you see in the focus um, or it does say something about responsiveness to the local media? I think that's typically we're working together. It's different if I'm put on administrative leave for. I'm just saying we've seen that and I wouldn't clearly be working with you on that. <laughs> clearly. <laughs> it happened in a very school district. Just so However, we already do have, as I did double check our succession plan. And so it says that basically the next person is behind blah, blah, blah. And then if that person can't, then the board will step in. So yes. There you go. That's right. Covered by multiple policies across that game each other. Get ready, Eric. <laughs> yeah, I remember listening last year. Was this thing I'll get hit by a bus? <laughs> did, did you get hives? Yes. Okay, good. That's the appropriate response. <laughs> Do we need to approve that? Um, no. Okay. I'll try to. I'll make a call. Like me. Okay. What red legislative updates do we have? What are what what is what is this state board or the government doing now? Uh, well, we just I just posted these two because I think that. Um, these are things that uh, we're looking at with the uh, Pike Speak Alliance and Susie and Eric participate in those as well. Uh, still new in the legislative session. Um, and so this, this one particularly is around student academic growth. Essentially what it would do is um, not allow a collective measure. So previously you could use the school performance mm -hmm. framework or the district performance framework. Uh, the ratings that the, the state provides. And you could say, all right, portion of Gary's evaluation is gonna come from that collective measure. But what this is doing is saying, no, it all has to be individual to, to the teacher. Also some questions here is that it rules out growth measures, which I'm really fascinated by that because oftentimes people want growth measures in it. So we'll see how that turns out. And then, do you think this is trying to erode Senate Bill 191? I think it is. Or do you think it's, I mean, do you think it's eventually moving to local measures? I mean, what? I think it's I mean, that and it's local measures more yeah. so because if you get away from growth, then you're no longer having a CMOS measurement. So exa exactly, really that, it's gonna be more a site you know, the, the autonomy at the district level. Well, so. that, yeah, because I couldn't decide with this one, particularly if it's, no, we're going to go all proficiency and mastery and we're looking for this, um, but then we're, if we're going to allow alternative pathways at the local level, then- I think it's alternative. You think it's going to go that? Yeah. Okay. That's, I think that's the yeah, goal. I mean, that's the gist I've been getting, but I just didn't know. Okay. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And then the other one, I think that it's actually Susie and I were talking about it today and in terms of para, para retirees that because there's a, a staffing shortage mm -hmm. that you may not have to um, sit out that time period between uh, between when you retire from para. We don't know the de details specifically of what that means for para contributions, but in some ways this could really help our, our, our staffing yeah. shortage. I think the question we have is what is the cost to the school district in terms of our contributions or um, in terms of any other benefits that we might need to provide. And I don't know if we have the specifics on that yet. The other one that I didn't post here, but it's going to be very important, is uh, the proposed you know, sort of buy down of the, the, the budget stabilization. Uh, there's some strings tied to that that could be connected with voucher programs. So there's a lot of different um, political viewpoints here. So as, as we learn more about what's actually going to be proposed, I think the, the, the board will want to understand that really more specifically because that's a huge one. What does that buy down mean? Um, and we haven't had any specifics, so it's just in the initial talks. Um, we'll be we'll be on those calls every Thursday morning for about an hour. So if there's a bill that comes across, or you hear about it, or you want some more information, or you know, um, that's a, that's a good place for us to go back and get a sense. Um, there is one. Uh, well, there's just some others that are just being talked about. So happy to 
but to bring that more to if you have something specific you want to know more about here just let me know let us know and then with the infrastructure oh yeah. funding when it's pretty is it just buses is that it was i actually think it's any kind of capital improvement okay. that's my understanding i could i could be wrong i can find out but it would be um building materials that then they do not have to pay the local sales tax on which which is a big deal so as long as i would say they don't increase the cost um and so how do you make sure that that gets regulated is that going to uh -huh. These are some of the updates. Appreciate that. Word self-reflection. I think one of the things we might want to talk about that we want to continue with after our discussion today using um, our uh, governance policy um, as our purpose and reflection point, or do we want to look at, you know, using it if we want to focus more on the board agreements, focus on each one of those at a different meeting or in their totality and use that as our means of judgment and reflection. I would like to do that. Would you like to focus those? Yes, Wait, can we lift that up? Because I think we've been, become pretty rote and a, a bit pedantic about um, that. So um, thinking about we embrace conflict and seek to resolve positively and respectfully. We address one topic at a time. We value diversity and multiple points of view in order to maximize the mission. I allow vegetable and meat toppings. <laughs> we respect others' views and thoughts through active communication and participation. I thought our communication and our dialogue um, was much more engaged and much more robust this evening. So, other thoughts on our working agreement? Um, I, I would like to discuss at some point the idea of adding. And we use this working agreement to make decisions in an informed way, blah, blah, blah. Okay. If we want to round that out with some kind of so capture that results or decision. We want to write that phrase and bring it to or start it to us. And then the other thing is the board's purpose kind of addressed today where it says A achieves appropriate results for students at an appropriate cost. And we don't, I'm assuming don't define what appropriate means at any point. Do we have to find appropriate? And then we avoid unacceptable actions and situations and like what's unacceptable. Like if those were all fairly vague terms. I don't know if we generally, can. yeah. So generally that policy is fairly standard in most policy governance boards. Okay. And the idea being, um, and I don't, I'm not an expert on policy government. So anybody jump in with Carver's uh, theories. Um, but the idea being that it, it's not well defined because it can change at any time. I mean, obviously, like when we had to move to COVID very quickly, and I'm just going to use this as an example, and you guys can say, no, that's not a good example, but we had to suddenly go with an online program. It wasn't the most stunning program. We ended up not loving it, but at the time, it, it was high cost, but we didn't really have many more appropriate okay. choices at the time. I would say that would be one of those things to come back then and say, you know, we violated that and mm -hmm. say to the superintendent like that was a violation because it cost so much money and we didn't get the results out of it at the time that was the appropriate decision because we were in a rock and a hard place and had to pivot quickly i think you know with time we made some different decisions um i don't know i mean yeah. okay i would say a is our end statement and b is the executive limitation that gives so, us more definition are we meeting the ends through uh through our appropriate results and avoiding those executive limitations. Okay. And I will work on that one. Okay, I appreciate that. And so what you're saying is, uh, or asking is, we replace the board's purpose with our working agreements. As the, our means for reflection. Okay. And so at the beginning of meetings, we'll state those. Is that what I don't know that we need to. I think we can, re I mean, we can state our purpose at the beginning, kind of like our intro, and then at the end, that can be our cap, uh, you know, closing or launch is okay. the working agreement. I don't know. Tell me. Yeah. The only reason I like it up front is you know, getting a reminder of how we're going to engage. Do you want me to do that out loud, or do you want to do it kind of like everybody take a moment to ground themselves? Um, I mean, pointing attention to it, um, I don't know, maybe out loud does that. I mean, I'm, I'm not set in any way. I just think for me, it helps put ourselves in that frame of mind. 
of I'm going to pause, I'm going to seek understanding, I'm going to uh, look for others' points of view before I'm going to do my own section, um, just how I'm going to conduct myself. So that's why I like it up front. Um, okay. Instead of or in addition to, and then we can use it as, still as the point of reflection at the end. I think I'm instead of you want to do both. both. I mean, yeah, I can do both, or in, uh, yeah, or we could alternate every other. Yeah, I like the alternating. We got two meetings a month now. Well, that's there what I was go. gonna say because we could have the working agreements for the work session. Uh, yeah, yeah, like that. Uh, there you go. <laughs> that was my next question. So, working agreements at the work session is <laughs> yes. the purpose for the regular. Oh my god! It just right brilliant. Itself. We are just doing amazing things tonight. I think we've been here for six hundred hours. Now, say the meeting was a success as part of our board reflection of the result that controversially. We're making progress. <laughs> Okay, so you feel good about that? Yeah, that's good. Okay, awesome. Deep breath and adjourn. Yeah. Actually, no, can't. 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 we can't. 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 can at subsection 4S to go into executive session to discuss a personnel matter. The particular matter that is to be discussed behind closed doors is part of the superintendent's annual evaluation. We have to say who's going to be in the room. Mm -hmm. Who's going to be in the room? So all we read all board members. We're going to invite Elizabeth. So board members, da da da, and invite superintendent Elizabeth Domain. Fantastic. Board members, no, superintendent. Mm -hmm. Mr. 641. Is there a second? Second. 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 Thank you. Johnson. Aye. Mowing. Aye. Sharon. Aye. Smith. Aye. Vitavit. Aye. Thank you all. You're welcome to stay, but as you well know,